it's no secret, BART is struggling to attract riders, but now it will be asking the riders it does have to dig deeper into their wallets. BART just signed off on a budget that raises both fares and parking fees as it waits to hear whether the state will approve a mass transit bailout in the budget due next Thursday. So BART is facing a fiscal cliff with pandemic relief funds running out. That could mean drastic cuts to services unless the state steps in. So with all of that looming, BART just approved an 11% fare hike over two years. Parking fees would rise from between $1 and $3 to as high as $6.30. And BART could start charging for parking and weekends and weekday afternoons, depending on the demand. So the agency is facing an estimated $93 million deficit in 2025. So it does beg the question, with ridership hovering around 40% of pre-pandemic levels, will fare hikes only make BART's problems worse? All right, Wilson Walker is live at the Concord station, where it isn't a problem finding parking these days. So that's a good thing. Hey there, Wilson. Yeah, yeah, BART riders got that going for them. Plenty of parking at just about every BART station. We will show you those available parking spaces in a little bit. But yeah, it's no secret that BART passengers have had a lot of complaints lately, a lot of polling showing that BART riders have, have different concerns. And now you hear about a fare increase. This is something that is obviously going to raise some questions. So we asked BART about that, why they're doing it, and a little bit more about the specifics on how those fare increases will work. Uh, about uh, 10 years off and on. Uh, 34 years. What do you think of the service? Uh, it's gone down since I started riding it a long time ago. Yes, okay. used to be much better. The experience has been gone down poorly. I'm not feeling safe lately. The complaints from longtime BART passengers are now familiar and those passengers are also familiar with BART's budget crisis. I hope they don't raise fares, but uh, I don't see any other way of them not raising fares, unfortunately. I actually did not support the, the fare increase that was adopted by the board. I advocated for a smaller increase, but I do support the idea of having regular increases in the fares because the alternative to that is what the BART board did 20 plus years ago, which was they didn't increase fares for a long time. And then every eight, 10, 12 years, they had to have huge fare increases and that really impacted riders. So board member Rebecca Saltzman says the fare increases will mean an extra five, 10, maybe 15 cents, depending on the trip and the increased parking fees aren't likely to happen for years because those are tied to parking demand. And so as you can see, our parking lots are by and large not full. Um, and so this policy says that once they are 90% full or above that, then small increases will go into effect. The empty lots reflect the real cause of the crisis, low ridership, which has tracked almost directly with San Francisco office occupancy, one of the slowest recoveries in the country. And that is something BART cannot change. But we're doing other things. We know riders have safety concerns. We've doubled the amount of officers that are actually on the trains. We've increased our progressive policing bureau with ambassadors and crisis intervention specialists. For now, the only hope on the budget end really is a state rescue. And there is some optimism that something is going to be worked out. I think the chances are very high that the state will approve some funding for transit before their legislative session ends. It might not happen before the budget deadline, which is next week, but there are other ways to get changes into the budget throughout the legislative session. So we have a couple more months of that. All right, let's go just to recap why BART is in such a bad spot here, right? If you go back before the pandemic, BART's fare box recovery, which is how much of the system is, is funded by just the people using the trains, it was good. It was over 50 percent. That's not just good. In the United States, it's kind of great. There really weren't many transit systems in the U.S. that were that were supported as well by the ridership as BART was. Well, that's great until your ridership plummets. It's a particularly bad situation for BART. You know, if you think of VTA, which has a fare box recovery of like 7 percent, if you lose ridership there, it doesn't crush your budget like your BART. So this is a big systemic problem. We mentioned the downtown San Francisco connection. 
that's a lot of current to swim against, Juliet. And so, you know, it, you can talk about.